Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Uh, welcome. So this week, we're going to review a little bit on the qua stuff. Some questions came up in the pregame chat and uh, want to also talk about connecting the dots, how to be able to, to align things in such a way as to be able to access a whole body energetic connection. And um, so first let's let's take a look at the at, at, at the qua because this is something that is really crucial to getting a big uh, flow of chi going on. So good, connecting up with your root. And um, you can be rooted without necessarily being sung qua, but the sung is where you're actually able to release the tension and allow the energy to move through in a way which is uh, uh, unhindered by muscular tension, particularly in that area. And that's a really crucial area because it governs the ability to take energy from the legs and transfer it to the torso. If there's a kink there, then you're going to have a lot of, uh, it's going to limit severely how much chi you're able to, to experience and to be able to access at will. So getting, spending time really tuning into Sun Kwa because it's something that, um, well, it, it's what they refer to in the classics as, as turning uh, with the waist. They don't talk about the qua in the classics, they talk about the waist. And so your ability to rotate your body is directly determined and influenced by how well you're able to relax your, your, your inguinal area, your groin. And uh, so the, uh, you know, in the classics, they say that the crown of the head and the waist you can study for a lifetime. And it's something that just keeps on giving. Deeper you go, the more it, it returns that investment. So uh, let's take another look at that, at that and um, try to so identify some of the issues that have come up. So why don't you stand up? So one of the questions that came up was when I say to set the, the knee over the ball of the foot. So just to be clear, I'll just uh, to reiterate, the ball of the foot is this part right here. It's not the bubbling well, which is right here. It's, it's that um, big knobby part on the, the big toe line. So that you, uh, that's, the, that's the, the bullseye. The weight spreads throughout the foot, but you want to center it on the ball. So you can press down with the big toe as well. But the uh, uh, when I say press down, it doesn't. There's no tension in it. That you're sort of just lightly feeling the floor with with your big toe as well. But the primary focus is on the ball of the foot. So when I say setting the knee in this direction, that means that you're aligning it in such a way that you're really feeling it pressed down on the uh, on the on the ball. So the uh, you want to empty out your back leg. So we're starting with the right leg here, and you want to empty out the back leg, your left leg, and you are looking for the sweet spot. That is where where you align things in such a way that it's doing you the most good. So the question was, where you know is it centered right over the the ball of the foot? I'm going to say that it depends on your legs. So the what you are looking for. So let's just let's take a look in the uh, on, on this axis here, and if we bring your knee too far in, you'll notice that's on the inside of the foot, and there's going to be some tension there on the inside of the leg. There may actually be some mechanical advantage from this, but you're going to find that, that it will wear out your, the, uh, the cartilage and the condyles 
uh, at, at your knee, the, the, where your patella, your kneecap is moving through these, through this, this little uh, uh, passageway that is lined with cartilage. And so you want to, so you don't want to get too far inside, then, but also take a look, if you move it too far to the outside, I'll turn to the outside of your foot, and just notice what that does to your, to your connection with the earth. Notice that it just kind of throws your balance out. You know, we kind of lock up and just sort of hang out in this place a lot of the time when we're, when we're feeling lazy, but that's blocking the chi. So if you bring it back and you do it over the center of the foot, and notice that's a little bit better than way on the outside, but if you take it just a little bit farther so it's lined up along the medial line, the big toe line, notice that it really locks in. Now, if my knees were really, my legs are really bow-legged, I might not bring it all the way, all the way in that far. Although you'll find a lot of bow-legged people that once they release the claw, that that condition disappears. It's sort of like something that is a, uh, an artifact of having compensated for a tight hip joint for a long time. But so right now you wanna feel it over the, the, the ball of the foot side to side. And just explore, take it out a little farther to, to the, the right and bring it back in, take it farther to the left and bring it back in. And just notice that there's a point there where it is really supportive. And that's what we're looking for. We're building the foundation you know, from the ground up. We're establishing a really strong foundation. And from the knee down to the ball of the foot, we want that to be like a real, like a pillar. Uh, a post that we kind of drive into the ground and that permits everything above it to really relax and get and get very sung. If we don't have that that very really strong post there, then the, the hip joint is going to naturally tighten up because it doesn't, you don't want to fall over. All right, taking it the other axis, we have uh, how far forward does it go? So if I bring it too far back, my weight is entirely in my heels and just notice what that feels like to have it centered. And there are a lot of people, masters who say that, that you want to center in your heel and I'm not gonna argue with them about it. I'm just gonna say, what do you feel? I know what I do, I know what I feel. And that is, if my weight is in my heels, then I am back about as far as I can go there. So it is, it's, Cramping my style. It's, it's blocking my chi. Whereas if I bring my knee forward so that I'm feeling it over the ball of the foot, then I feel much more stable. And so the my center is, at that point, the center of my body is closer to the center of my foot. Whereas if it's back in my heel, it's all the way back. Not nearly as much fun for me. So if I take it too far forward, say the knee is pushed out past the toes, feel into that and notice that that puts a lot of strain on the patella ligaments and uh, it, uh, it's not nearly as much fun. So we take it back here to, oh, so it's just forward of the, of the arch there. It's right on the, right centered over the ball of the foot. So we're going both this way and and, and this way. So we're, we're connecting up in a way that we feel the sweet spot there. It becomes a very natural thing. So then you're able to move freely from the claw because you have that support. So that's, uh, that's the first one. We're gonna have, take questions later about that. But the, uh, so that's the first thing, the lining that up with the ball of the foot sets, creates, a foundation that permits the the claw to uh, to uh, to get much more released. So now the uh, the next issue is being able to let go of muscular tension. So last week I showed how um, I'll show you again the uh, soon. So if I have a have a, a weight here. If I'm pushing up 
resisting gravity, I'm pushing away from the earth, then that is a yang movement, okay? Certain type of muscular action is required, muscular contraction is required in order to make that happen. If I bring it down and just hang out here, that is a yin activity. That is, I am releasing into the structure. Even though there's work being done and I am still using muscles, the muscles that are being used are on a, at a passive level. Okay, there, there's a yin kind of thing. They're very supportive, but they are, um, it's, it's moving in time in different directions. So the, uh, what we're doing here, as we release into the leg, we're still using muscle. You know, so the, you're never not using some muscle. If you're alive, you're using some muscle. Even if it's your heart beating, you're, you're using some muscle. So muscle is happening. What kind of muscular activity are we talking about? This is a yin one, that is, this is a sum. We're releasing down into the support. And what's happened is you start to feel the connective tissue. There's no way to really access your connective tissue directly. So you have to set up the conditions that allow it to, to occur. And so by releasing down and feeling into that support, that passive support of your leg, of your muscles in your leg, then you are creating this sung, this release into structure. And so we can then, just as I, when I was releasing the, the, the weight, I was still supporting it, I was taking it down. Same thing is happening here. I set my knee and if I spiral down to the right, I'm very slowly settling down, spiraling down into that wall. okay? So my body is, is facing this way and my knee is facing that way, okay? And that allows, what's happening is I'm closing the claw, that is the space between my thigh and my torso is getting smaller as I do this. And then I come back and whenever I come back to center, what I do not want to do is to push away from the earth and bob up. Instead, I want to spiral down and then just turn and keep centered and keep at a at a a uh, flat plane coming coming across. This way, I'm able to use that energy, that yin energy. That, uh, that I've stored up by, uh, by going soon, I'm able to express it. I gather that and I may be able to express it in the turn. Okay, so the, this is a, a different way of, of moving than is that most of us have done, and including in Tai Chi. A lot of Tai Chi happens where you're, you're moving from your back leg, then you're moving, you're moving into the front leg like this, you know, and you're moving into the back leg and the, da, 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 you know, there's this a rocking back and forth. And when you do that, you're floating. How do we get from, you know, something we covered last week, but the idea is we want to, rather than rock back and forth, we spiral down and then turn. So, we're, in terms of the waist, what we're doing, we're, rather than being a horizontal movement, let's say if I'm doing a push, and if I'm pushing from my back leg and pushing forward, okay, that, that is a momentum. It is a linear movement. Okay, and, that's a, uh, and that's fine, but it's kind of external. It is using, I'm using the muscle power of my back leg to push away from the earth and, and, and to uh, use force to, to, to push outward. Whereas when we're using the hua, we're using the rotational, we're using the rotational force. That is we're coming, instead of pushing off the back leg, 
we're setting up on the front leg, we're gathering, mobilizing the chi, and then we turn, and the energy is coming from the front leg, not the back leg. So, so the, the, the energy is going this way. So there's a rotational movement rather than a, than a forward thrust. Very different way of uh, approaching this. And this is something that uh, I learned from, uh, from William C.C. C. Chen. And uh, I find it to be very uh, useful, but also very much in keeping with the, with the, the message that's, that is, is uh, fundamental to the, uh, to the to Tai Chi. That is the turning of the hips, turning of the waist is what, where we direct the, uh, the power. So back to, uh, back to this, we go to the back leg. We feel the ball of the back foot, the left foot, set the knee and feel that sweet spot. You'll notice that it's not going to be directly, vertically over the ball of the foot because of the, the position of your body. What you're looking for here is where's the sweet spot? In this case, I'd say my knee is probably a little bit closer to my toes, but the force, the downward force is coming in and connecting up with the ball of the foot. So you, you look for that sweet spot. And again, here, explore. Take it back so that your weight is over the heel and notice how you can get knocked over with a feather. And then bring it farther forward so your knee is well over your toe and notice that that transfers the weight back to your front leg. So there's a, a sweet spot there where you're, that you're looking for. You're looking for that place where you say, oh yeah, here I am. So, and when you have that location, then you spiral down, release, get that yung, yin sitting down into the quad, feeling that yin support of your, of your leg and then turn back to center. If we want to turn the other way, so this one here, we're again, closing down the quad, we're collapsing the, the space between thigh and torso. If we want to go the other direction, we want to load up, spiral down to the right. You feel the ball set the knee and you spiral down to the right. Here, the knee is pointing out that way and my body's pointing out this way. So here I'm opening the quad. So I'm opening the space. So that really opening and closing can be either yin or yang, depending on which direction you're moving. So you want to, here, your, the yin movement is opening, and we turn, that closes it, and that's yang. We go the opposite direction, we do the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the left, and the, the qua closes, that's yin, and we turn back and then opens, and that's yang. So opening and closing only describes the relationship of the leg to the torso, in terms of the space between between the two at the at the, at the groin, the inguinal crease. So going from one request that we had was to transferring between uh, one leg and the other. So going from let's say the right leg forward, feel the ball set the knee, and we're we're, we're loaded up in that that front leg. I want to transfer to my back foot. I'm going to feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and I can either turn left or right. I can spiral left or right, depending on which way I want to want to end up. But in this case, I'm going to spiral down to the left. So I start to, by doing this, I start to load up my left leg. So now about 70% of my weight is in my left leg. So I'm loading that. So this, I load that first before I turn the issue, the issue power. So I'm going into the front foot, feel the ball, step the knee. So I push my knee forward and find the ball of the foot there. And then spiral down to the right. Loading up the right quad now. 
I didn't shift my weight. What I did was I used the claw to activate this change in substantiality. And then I turn to issue. And you can reverse it back and forth. So the, the um, transfer is it's never just a shifting of weight. It's always spiral down and turn, spiral down and turn. Okay, let me get to take some questions so before we get any deeper in this. Okay, uh, unmute people. Well, they can unmute okay, themselves. Okay, so uh, Richard, you had something. Unmute yourself, please. I can't unmute all. I can. I can do it. <laughs> just takes yeah. me a minute to bounce. Uh, I was just realizing tonight um, that I think that if I get this right, that when I turn back after spiraling, yes, it's almost like an automatic recoil. Um, the movement, the movement back to center from the coil, is very. Uh, powerful and almost automatic. I don't actually do anything. Uh, something about the spiraling loads it up and it and it bounces back when I turn. Uh, I would say uh, that it's a, a way of thinking about it, although it's not the way I would uh, I would describe it personally. For me, I I'm controlling every every centimeter. You know, I can, so in other words, I can stop that at any point. Sure. So, the, so the, the, there's a control factor involved there. But I get what you're saying. It's like the energy, you have so much energy there. It's like pulling back. It's like letting go of the bowstring. And then, and it, it goes, I think that's what you're trying to say is that the energy exactly. is, is, is driving you, is driving the machine at that point. Exactly. Yeah. Great. So that, that's cool. But there, you definitely want to consciously move. Every every step of the way, there's the you're 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 in control every step of the way. I just that, meant the, uh, move, the movement back seems effortless. Not that I'll, I'm not I'll, not that I'll I'm not. Take that. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah, so in other words, the you've mobilized the the chi, and so then all you have to do is release the bowstring, and and the arrow flies. So that that's uh, uh, that's cool. Good, uh, Andrew. Just a, my original main karate teacher way back in like 1974 yeah. <laughs> said, he, he would talk about this trend, you know, every, the, the in-between places in the kata. And he, he would use this wonderful phrase, he said, you're a martial artist every moment along the way. Yes, that's right. You're always, you, there's no moment where you let go of being a martial artist to get to the next position and be a martial artist. That, that's 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 a good way to put it. That's great. <laughs> yes. Uh, anybody else? Is all, all that clear so far? Leticia. Hey. Hi. Well, hi. I think with the misunderstanding of language sometimes, I was having a confusion in thinking the ball of the foot, it was like all like the, the thing, and it's just in the big toe, right? Right there, like like that. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, so just yeah, right. You know, if we're if we're looking right, right, this guy right here. Okay. Yeah. Great. Right. So that's, so that's, I feel that's something, the ball. I feel something like more soft and like an energy moving. That it goes yes. all the way to this finger that it has a hole. <laughs> just because my knee wasn't hurting anymore and it was feeling like a releasing. Because I was Beautiful. moving a little bit in a twisty place before. Beautiful. So, Good. So there, you will feel energy in the bubbling well here, but that's the yin spot. The you know that's that are uh, the insubstantial. The, okay. the 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 ball of the foot is the substantial part. That's the part that gives you the support that allows the bubbling well to open up and 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 energy to, to transfer freely. 
Okay. So anybody else? Yeah, no, I'm, okay. I'm finding, going to what Richard was saying of the loaded spring, I was feeling that sensation, but I'm starting to discover that if you keep it on the lo level plane, it's it's like a feeling of less resistance more than the lo loaded spring sensation. There's less resistance. I think that's that's probably what he's, he's saying there too. That that right, Richard. That that there's there's very little resistance. It's, like you said, effortless. So I think that's uh, that's another way of putting it. So yeah, Jonathan, you had something. Well, I just want to, to share that opening move or nine, nine movements in that opening of the, of the form, which seems so relevant to this. To addressing Richard's point, it, the thing I worry about, the way he put it is that you can lose the sense of, you go down, like as you do the opening form, you spiral down to the left, but you're loading the right with a spiral down to the left. And then you're just turning to the right and again, loading up, you know, you're going down again, loading more. And then you're spiraling down to the right and loading yet a third time. It's almost like three gears down. So I, I just, if you just automatically feel you're recoiling, you might lose that sense of extra grounding that that second just turn gives after the, the initial spiral. Do you know what I'm saying? Into the right foot? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so what Jonathan is saying here is that we're starting, uh, if we do, like do an opening, you know, we break the opening down into like a whole bunch of different parts, nine or 10 parts. We start off in weight 50 50. And I want to load up my right leg. So I'm going to feel the ball of my right foot and then set my right knee and then. Spiral down to the left. So I'm still on my right leg, but I'm spiraling down to my left. So this gives you, this starts to gather the chi as you do that. You're opening up the, uh, the but also you can hang out here if you want for a while, and we have. And then from here, I turn to the right to further load up my right leg. And that actually gives me more energy. And then pick up the heel and step out, empty step. I feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee now. And to load up my left leg, I'm going to spiral down to the right in the, in the left claw. So, I'm releasing down and it's starting to transfer the substantiality from the right leg to the left so that they get, we get it back to 50, 50. And then from here, so what I think John's saying is like each of these loadings gives you more. And uh, so you wanna, wanna be conscious of that. Is that right, Jonathan? Well, I'll go, I'll, yes, except I mean, do I have this wrong? But I actually don't move my left foot until I've spiraled down. So it's a spiral, a turn, and another spiral. Then I move my left, and then I turn to make it 50-50. Uh, well, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying it's not the way I do it. OK. <laughs> <laughs> 10,000 times the wrong way. Right. <laughs> it works, though. It, it is its own way of working, though. I'm sure it does, uh, but uh, there may be, um, you know, uh, an, an additional step there that you might not need. Um, but the uh, so the well, no, I mean you're spiraling down to your right after you've moved your left foot, and I'm saying why not just give yourself as much as three gears grounding before you lift that left foot. As you remember, this all started when I told you I panicked every time I lifted my foot up. It was like ah. You know, and you, so you, you, you gave this to me as a, as a first as a personal <laughs> gift. But. And it works for you. So that's good. And it worked. And it worked. Yes. So uh, good. So uh, moving on. Uh, any other questions? Okay. So, oh, Karen. It's more of an observation. Um, yes. I can't find that, that sweet spot without making an adjustment on my sacrum. Otherwise I actually feel 
almost like a crushing of the ball in the hip joint. In but, your sacrum. Yeah, I have to, a, a tilting of the pelvis a little, it's a little bit. So it's like my sacrum is more pointed down to the earth more. And okay. if, if I don't do that, I there's no way I can get some. So uh, I think that that's 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 very good. So that's you're, you're dropping by dropping the sacrum. You're and this is actually part of the um, central equilibrium process, where you drop the sacrum and reach with the knee one. So you have you're reaching so between the between here and here, you're lengthening, right? So this is called the Wei Lu here and the uh, knee one. So you're actually relaxing the, the lower lumbar area and allowing that to drop and reaching here so that by pulling those two in opposite directions, we're getting those poles in opposition, which allow us to allow the energy to flow more freely. But as you're noticing, it also mechanically allows for freer movement whenever you do that. Because you gotta get the you gotta get the pelvis at the right angle in order to uh, in order to make that uh, to be able to freely let that that uh, hip joint go. Valerie. I want to uh, basically reiterate what Sharon just said. Um, because I find that when we, we move and we're standing up and I'm trying to, you know, get a good eye shot of the laptop, you know, to watch you, I find myself leaning forward slightly. So I'm continually having to drop the tailbone, bring myself back. And then I find myself a few minutes later, I'm already leaning in again and then I have to readjust. <laughs> so I know exactly what she's talking about. Yes, I can't do it when I'm in that forward leaning position. So it, it just uh, reconfirms for me the importance of being in that central equilibrium. Cool. Very good. Great. Good. Leticia, you had a question? No, she just wanted clarification on lengthening. Oh, lengthening. She didn't get the word. Okay. Yeah, just, I just. Kind of stretching the, between the two. Yeah. You're creating more more distance between your tailbone and your and your yeah, yeah exactly exactly so the um, cool um, you ready to go on I, I think so uh, were there any other questions from the pregame that I'm forgetting uh, anybody everybody get that there's get there's handled if something comes up let me know so uh, talking about um, the connecting the dots which a lot of what we're talking about is that, and that is that getting the structure set up so that you are unkinking the hose. And I think the, you know, the, the, the hose is a really uh, useful analogy in this case, so like, you know, like a garden hose. And that is that if you, uh, if you have a hose that's kind of rolled up or or in a ball or something like that, and you turn it on, it's not really doing you much good. You can fill it up with water, but it's not gonna do you much good. You have to be able to open that out, reach it so that it is able to extend to where you wanna use it. Similarly, if, um, if there are any kinks in the hose, then, then that is going to limit the distribution of, of water. And a third thing is, and this is in terms of mobilizing the chi. If, um, if you're using a garden hose, let's say, and every time you want to use it, you have to go back to the spigot and turn that on, and you go out and then you, and you use it, and then you go back and you turn that off again. It's an inefficient way of, of, of using a hose. Ideally, you know, you've got a certain task you want to do, you turn the hose on, and you turn it off at the, at the nozzle, at the end of the, uh, at the hose, so the hose fills up, the chi is mobilized, the water is, is ready to go, and all you have to do is either turn the nozzle or give it a squeeze if you have that kind of hose, and then it'll, the, the, the flow will begin immediately. So what happens with 
most of us humans is that we, through a lifetime of kinking the hose, we kind of have lost touch with the energy. So much so that a lot of people do not even have any sense of it at all. And uh, yes, Leticia. You're, you're, you're muted again. Yeah. It's just, can I, can somebody write the, that me, that word? Because I'm losing that meaning and it's all about that. So I'm just like not getting it. Hose, hose, H-O-S-E. Uh -huh. -E. Thank you. Kinking the hose, yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like, no, I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> I, I, I'll talk a little slower too, so that you, you can get it. Cause I know that you're, you're, you're working with two languages here. And uh, so, so to unkink the hose means to take away the, the obstructions there. And if we fill up the hose with water, then all we need to do is just a slight, a slight movement at the, at the end, at the nozzle creates a big effect. If we have to go and fill up the hose every time, then there's a long delay. Similarly, we humans have settled for a lot less chi than is possible. And mobilizing the chi means that you are getting it enough of it together to do work for you. That ability to, to move effortlessly through life, to be able to have enough energy to be able to have vitality for a long, long time, to be able to constantly go back to the fountain of youth and take another sip. The more, chi yes, you had something? I was just gonna say, if you're connecting to the big chi, it's like connecting your hose to the house water source. <laughs> okay, good, uh, right? So <laughs> I don't know if everybody heard that, but if you're connecting to the big chi, you're constantly replenishing the water. You're, you're plugged into the big water source. And uh, so when we get into central equilibrium, we reach with the knee wong, the crown of the head. We drop the Wei Lu, the sacrum. We allow that to drop. We get Sung Kwa. We feel the balls of the feet. We, then we are constantly replenishing our chi. And part of the game that we're playing right now is learning how to tolerate more energy. That's what it means to mobilize, to be able to tolerate having lots of chi so that your hose is, it's full up. All you have to do is, is, is squeeze the nozzle and, and boom, you're able to create an effect. So, um, when we connect the dots, we are working to ensure the whole body is allowing that flow of energy to go unrestrained by muscular tension. So that means that learning to practice, learning how to align the joints so that we can thread the nine channeled pearl so that we're able to allow the energy to move through the joints freely and easily. And we're not putting restraints on that, on that flow of chi. But of course it requires practice in order to be able to tolerate more and more energy. So, and for whatever purpose, the, whether it be a martial energy so that you can, you can direct your energy in for self-defense or be it for healing being able to direct your energy to be able to create a, a, a very positive healing effect on someone, or just being able to function well in your life, having that vitality. So let's, um, I showed you uh, an exercise that I made up a few weeks ago that um, helps to uh, practice so several of these elements 
in a way that is um, actually a very useful martial arts move. Uh, 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 an amazingly powerful uh, and um, uh, simple tool for that you're able able to to use for self defense and generate a tremendous amount of power in a very quite effortlessly. So uh, would you stand up? Now we did it on the right side with the, the right leg forward. This time we're going to do it with the left leg forward. So begin with your weight. Um, you settle in that front, the front leg, your left leg. And the, um, so we're going to feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and spiral down to the left. We are loading, releasing the claw, spiraling down to the left. And begin with your left hand palm down, right? Both hands palm down. So you're spiraling down. I want you to just feel into that. So we're getting sung kwa in that left leg. Reach with your, your index finger of your left hand. Also reach out with your elbows, both of them. Reach with the finger of your, your, your right hand as well. So you're loaded up your sung kwa in that left leg. And as you... Um, I'm sorry, we're going to we're going to spiral down to the right. Let's do it this way. So we do the ball, set the knee, spiral down to the right. And as you do that, you reach out with your left hand, palm down, and rotate, set your elbow, and rotate your forearm so the palm is up. Reach with your right hand. And you, what you're creating here is a pole, a two pole system between your left and your right hands. And so the reaching, setting the elbow, reaching with the fingers creates this powerful structure, this forearm coming out. And it, you're able to, by Spiraling down, you're able to reach out and feel that energetic connection. And as you turn, feel the ball of the left foot set the left knee, turn to the left now. And as you do that, you rotate your forearm so the palm faces out. Feel the connection between both hands. So this is connecting the dots. You want to feel the balls of both feet. The weight in your left leg is a substantial one. You want to feel that. So just, I want you to really get a sense of that. So you're opening up, reaching with the elbows, reaching with the fingers, opening the shoulders. So now feel the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee and spiral down to the left. And as you do that, the left hand comes down, the right hand reaches across and rotates palm up. Feel into that, reach with the elbows, you're rotating the forearm from the elbow. The shoulders are relaxed. The weight is primarily in your right leg, your back leg. You're reaching with the crown of your head, the knee one, and we're turning from the quad, from the waist. Now turn, feel the ball, set the knee, and turn to the right, and as you turn, set the right elbow, rotate the right forearm, and reach out. You feel the energetic connection between Actually, not just your hands, but throughout your whole body. 
you want to feel a whole body energetic connection. So here we're reaching out, we're opening up the joints, we're lengthening, lengthening. So it's like stretching that garden hose out so that it's able to do work. We're unkinking the hose. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee and spiral down to the left. As you do that, your left hand comes across, reaching with the fingers. The right hand, set the right elbow, pull down with the right hand. Rotate your left forearm. <laughs> Feel the connection there. So here we are, we're in the left leg, spiraling down to the right, sparing to the left and rotate your left forearm. So your hand palm out. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. As you do that, your right hand comes across, set the elbow and rotate the forearm, so the palm is up. And turn to the right, rotate your forearm, and open. Okay, any questions? Can you just do the sequence one more time? Sure. Any other questions? We can do that. We can do that again. Okay. So uh, you, uh, Leticia. When will you explain it? There's a moment when, when it's a gap in between the move the movement of your hands and when we have to spiral back. So I don't know if I'll just some somehow stop, and then I feel something weird happening. Um, explain it. Like uh, you, you said like the spiral down to the left and then we're going to the other side and you're moving right. the hands and while you're moving the hands, we're coming backwards, no? Like, or, or front, it depends where we are going, but to the other side. Right, right to the, from behind. Do it from behind? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you won't be able to see my hands as well, but I can talk you through it. Okay. So here we go, left. So here we go, sir. Your uh, uh, left ball, set the left knee, and you spiral down to the right. The left hand reaches out and set your right elbow and rotate the left forearm. Turn to the left. So the weight is primarily in your left leg now. Palm out. Do the ball of the right foot. Set the right knee. Spiral down to the left. Right hand reaches. Rotate the forearm. Palm up. And then turn. Set your right elbow and rotate the forearm. Feel the connection. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral down to the right. Left hand reaches across, rotate. Turn, set the left elbow, rotate the left forearm. Your weight is in your left leg. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Right hand reaches across and rotate the forearm. Turn, rotate the other way. The weight is in your back leg now. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral right. Reach, rotate your left forearm. Turn, rotate, palm out. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral left. Right hand reaches across, rotate the forearm, turn right. 
rotate. Okay, and one more time facing you. You can see that. So here we are. Left ball, set the left knee, spiral right. So hand, set the elbow, rotate. And then turn from the elbow. Right ball, set the right knee, spiral left. Right hand reaches across and turn. You're reaching out with that elbow, that turn there, and then rotate and turn the other way. Okay? It may take a few times uh, going over this section of the video to get it, but uh, very powerful move. And uh, um, you're using that elbow gin to great effect. And it's, it's a good way just of practicing that. So coordinating the, the ball, knee, qua with the turn, with the elbow, with the fingers, getting all those things, those pieces together in a fairly simple movement there um, uh, enables you to practice that and really get it inside. Valerie. I think you should do that every Tuesday night for a long, long time. Because it's, it's really, no, it, it's really very simple and it's easy to feel. And the, you know, the speed that you're going at, I think is excellent. And the points that you're driving at um, for me anyway, I'm able to access it, unlike anything else that we're doing. Wow. It just, okay. it happens. It happens. Um, it just happens. It just happens. <laughs> it just happens. <laughs> yeah. Great. Good. That's what, that's what we're looking for. Scott. Just a real quick comment. I happened to look down at Valerie's hands while we were doing this and uh -huh. it looked like somebody had cut a bead open. They were just so red. <laughs> like, really, I, I, I've never seen somebody's hands that red. <laughs> Great. Rick. Yeah, I mean, the last couple of weeks, it's been like a rave in my body, but today it changed, if you'll excuse the expression, because we don't use this in the new age. It became a Chinese fire drill. As soon, <laughs> as, soon as I started doing that, it was like all the guys who you were raving are running from one hand to the next. <laughs> They're just going through the shoulders, through the arms, just it, it's all the sensations that you mentioned, the electricity, as well as the, the flow. It's the fullness. It's just, yeah. And I also recognize, Valerie, the red hands. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Excellent. Very cool. Very cool. Cool. Anybody else? Cool. Uh, great. Uh, let's see. I, okay. I think that... Uh, I think it's a wrap. Um, thank you all so much. It's been wonderful. Love you all. See you yeah. soon. Bye bye. See you later. Bye. -bye. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, bye. Thank you, Thanks, Maria. Thank you. Everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.